Graphics can be a rather touchy subject. Some games may not have photorealistic visuals, but make up for it with memorable art styles that are technically sound in other ways. Aesthetics may dictate a certain game's graphics more than you think, and trying to classify something as having bad graphics is tough. Sure, there are games like that, but as a whole, they're still enjoyable, if you like that genre in mind, that is. Undertale Toby Fox's Undertale possesses a ton of charm underneath its relatively archaic visuals. Whether it's the quirky gameplay, freedom of choice, or utter wit, it's a game whose art style pays tribute to the retro era of gaming. For a retro-styled game, though, it could look a little better. Regardless, if you want a compelling story with significant consequences, Undertale is your ticket. Minecraft One look at Minecraft will make you wonder how it got so popular with its blocky art style. Though it will be receiving a heavy visual update this fall, aside from mods that already significantly improved the visuals, Minecraft has always been popular despite its graphics. That's because of the sheer beauty of its system. You can build what you want, expressing your creativity, play it like a survival game, or just explore the world freely. The possibilities are endless. Deadly Premonition So the jury may still be out on whether Access Games' Deadly Premonition is actually good, it even holds a Guinness World Record for its polarizing nature. Lo and behold, it's visually not all that impressive, but Deadly Premonition effectively combines a number of different systems, from survival and QTEs to exploration and combat, while featuring a story to put Twin Peaks to shame. It's bizarre and definitely not for everyone, but truly revered for those who can get into it. Victor Vran Part hack and slash, part action RPG, and morally grotastic thanks to the protagonist voiced by Doug Cockle, who also voiced Geralt in The Witcher games. Victor Vran is surprisingly addictive. Though fairly straightforward on the outside, the game boasts a surprising amount of depth. Again though, the graphics could have been better, especially compared to something like Path of Exile. Regardless, slashing time with Vran can be a blast. Shadow Warrior 2013 this reboot of the 3D Realm's first-person shooter may have brought us a campier protagonist and equally absurd circumstances, especially in the sequel. However, Flying Wild Hogs Shadow Warrior 2013 isn't the prettiest game, or even one of the better-looking games of its release year. It makes up for that with fast and insane combat, outlandish weapons, and a crazy story. Also, swords and guts and gore. We'd recommend the sequel more, but Shadow Warrior is still a trippy experience. Papers, please. Perhaps one of the best examples of not needing stellar graphics for excellent gameplay. Papers, please combines management, puzzle solving, political drama, and detective work into one awesome experience. You're an immigration inspector of the fictional Arstotska in 1982, and have to either show compassion to the various individuals trying to pass through, or keep your job and make some tough decisions. Graphics-wise, the game is less impressive than Undertale, but again, its atmosphere and brilliant dystopian aesthetic make up for it. Risk of Rain As a roguelike indie platformer, Risk of Rain can be crazy, unpredictable, and downright diabolical, along with having an awesome soundtrack. Yes, the visuals aren't quite up to snuff, especially when you consider the game being released in 2013. But again, the aesthetics fit the overall gameplay, creating a destitute atmosphere that's both punishing, rewarding, and action-packed. To the Moon Developed on RPG Maker XP, To the Moon isn't trying to sell you on its graphics. It's instead telling a heartbreaking, compelling story, one that will stick with you long after the game ends. For an RPG, there isn't much ado about To the Moon except for the exploration and decision making. However, it's one of the finest titles in the genre and a testament to the power of storytelling over graphics. Environmental Station Alpha the Metroidvania-esque environmental station Alpha is yet another title shooting for that retro 8-bit aesthetic. Whether you find it graphically impressive or not, there's no denying that it effectively creates a dingy, otherworldly space station with its limited visuals. In terms of Metroidvania titles, environmental station Alpha is definitely underrated and worth checking out, even with so much competition. Counter-Strike Go Remember how realistic and gritty Counter-Strike felt in 2000? Though the game has seen significant visual improvements in later iterations, especially Counter-Strike Global Offensive, the 2012 edition is still fairly lackluster. 
Gun models seem dated, animations lack nuance, and it's all very, very simplistic for what's essentially one of the most popular competitive games currently. However, and you knew this was coming, it makes up for it with solid gunplay, an excellent array of systems, realism, strong map design, you name it. Also, high-tech servers and ranked, which is simply phenomenal. The End is Nigh Edmund McMillan has never really been a stickler for visuals, though his aesthetics are on point most times. Such is the case with The End is Nigh, a Super Meat Boy-esque platformer with a simplistic color palette. Behind those endless shades of black and gray is a wicked title with backtracking, cartridge collecting, and enough difficult platforming to satisfy the worst masochists. In short, it's a fun old time. Stardew Valley Another title that embodies a more retro-style aesthetic, Stardew Valley doesn't need to look incredible. Instead, it uses its assets to create a relaxing atmosphere. Farming feels great, interacting with NPCs is natural, and the music is lilting. Show this to any Harvest Moon fan and they'll fall in love. Heck, show this to anyone and they'll love it soon enough. Path of Exile Path of Exile is a great free-to-play action RPG and has received a boatload of new content with the fall of Orioth, which is also free. Grinding Gear Games has definitely added enough detail to environments, enemies, and items to make them stand out in today's market. That being said, Path of Exile is still very much an isometric action RPG whose art style feels more akin to, say, Grim Dawn. Speaking of which... Grim Dawn Titan Quest developer Crate Entertainment's latest action RPG, Grim Dawn, has plenty of customization. It also boasts plenty of freedom, a responsive combat system, and lots of content. The aesthetic is very much like Diablo 2, however, it's, well, grim, dark, and fairly grimy which adds to the atmosphere, honestly. The game feels more macabre and brutal, especially compared to the polished feel of Diablo 3. Dying Light Let's be fair, even when it released, Dying Light wasn't a very good looking game. On top of that, there were performance issues like screen tearing, but Dying Light didn't have to work hard to suck us into its open world parkouring and survival horror. Techland did its part to improve the visuals with the Enhanced Edition a year later, and the present game owes much of its fun to the numerous updates. In fact, even more free DLC will be coming in the next year, so now's a good time to jump in. And that'll be about it for this one. If you guys like what we're doing at Gaming Vault, please consider subscribing to our channel, and I'll see you guys on the next video.